I felt like all of these images of who I was were just tossed aside because I could be this person at work, but when I went home, I knew I wasn't enough. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Come on in here. We've got a seat for you right here. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the practical stuff of living it out, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Jay and Aaron Cluley. Three friends who love having honest, loving women around us, and we know how important it is. When we need a little extra help, ta-da! Ta-da! We ask our friend, Miss <laughs> Joyce, and she's here with us today. They make me answer all the questions. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. We, we just toss the questions at yeah. you and sit back and wait for the wisdom. I think I might toss a few back today. Please don't. Oh, <laughs> look out. Plot twist. Look out. So she may ask you some questions, too, yeah. because... Uh, you guys are one of the girls, too, so come on in. Let's talk it out. All right. We, we were just talking hair, which I think, I think some of our friends would enjoy hearing some of the just, you know, useless information that we throw around while we're sitting mm-hmm. talking. Well, you may Absolutely. have noticed that Jay's hair is a lot longer yes, when, when you saw her last time. a little bit longer than usual. She's and gotten it caught in the car door. Yes, into the toilet. <laughs> Almost put it in the toilet. <laughs> Sat on it when she came in here. Yes, and I was just kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> and that just sparked a conversation about hair. Yeah. Ginger has her hair straight today. My hair's straight today. I don't do that very often because it's far too much work. And I'm basically against doing something that doesn't stay put and, you know, won't last for long. <laughs> not so, in summer in Missouri. Uh, it's just no, not worth it. Exactly. So yeah, By the end of the day, it. doing. <laughs> and then Joyce um, was telling us, how wonderfully she takes care of her hair, how often oh, yes. she she gets it done. That's why it always looks just right. Well, my hair's baby fine. It's just like baby hair, so I have to get it cut every two weeks. Mm. And because there's some white stuff under here. I don't believe oh, Never. I don't believe is it, I, is it dandruff? I, get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also get it touched up every two weeks. Otherwise... I get those little gray Your sparkles. It's, oh, I yeah. call it wisdom. Otherwise, That's my prettier. wisdom starts showing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't know how gray my hair is, nor do I ever intend to know. <laughs> I love that. I found some gray hairs this week, and I said, Mike, look at that. Yeah, he said, "What is it? It's gray hair." So I tried to pull it, and I pulled the wrong one. So I'm, it's still there. Yeah, but they're stubborn little boogers. No, they're, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we talk about being in all different stages of life. Yeah, right? it's different stages of gray hair <laughs> that teaches us a lot. <laughs> That is so funny. <laughs> well, over the weekend, I had the opportunity to um, be with our two-year-old granddaughter, and she's so fun. But she's at this stage, her two-year-old talking stage, where she kind of <laughs> sounds like a gangster from the 20s. You know? <laughs> like, what does that sound so like? So she's like, give me some milk, yeah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> she loves to say, sure. It's her answer to everything. So, like, do you do you want some food with your milk? And she'll say, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got that thing going on right now, and she'll smile a big dimple, and we will give her anything that she wants. Absolutely. I'm like the henchman that just goes right along with it and gives her everything. But one of the things that I was thinking about is how hard we are working to tell her at two years old who she is, Wow, that yeah. you are loved, that you are brilliant, that yeah. you are beautiful, that you are... Destined for good things because God is with you. And for all of us as adults, we haven't all had that kind of right. upraising from, mm-hmm. from two years old on. And even if we have, because I have, yeah. we still hit those times that we kind of forget who we are. Mm-hmm. So today we're talking about what a lot of people have called like an imposter syndrome, mm. where you kind of feel like, Mm, one of these days, they're all going to figure it out <laughs> that I'm not really who they think I am. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I don't have it all together the way that it looks. Have, have it, um, Let me start with you guys. Have, <laughs> have you guys ever felt that imposter thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to tell you more about it? <laughs> it's up to you. You don't have to, but uh, there's oh, not much talking it out if you don't. <laughs> I'm going to give you one word answers today. Um, absolutely. I think like even sitting here on this podcast, 
we've been doing this for almost two years and even still I'll get here and I'm like, Aaron, who do you think you are that you should be sitting here talking with Joyce Meyer and these women who are brilliant? You have nothing to say. Like uh, eventually they're going to figure out you're just making it up. (laughs) So no, this is not like a feel sorry for me. This is me just being honest. So even as like an adult, we all have those moments. We've all felt that at different times. We've we've all kind of been there. Absolutely. I think it's You have a lot of value though. I just want you to know. But this is a preface to say, I, yeah, I don't I know need you to validate me. Okay. All right. I know you love me. <laughs> okay. All right. You can tell me later. I'll tell you later. I love yeah. just watching this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but I think we all experience that in our lives every day. You are put in situations, even if you know that you're supposed to be there. Right. You still are, um, the enemy knows where to get you and when to hit you and you question yourself. I can give you some good news. I love it. When you get old enough, you finally get over it. Do you? Do you just not care anymore? <laughs> you just get to the point where it's like, it is what it is. Take it or leave it. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I look forward to that. Did you have that at different times in your life? Oh, yeah. I had a lot of it because I was abused in mm-hmm. my childhood, and I certainly didn't know who I was and mm-hmm. tried to be like everybody. Tried to be like Dave, who's nice and calm and... My pastor's wife, who was sweet and merciful, and my neighbor, who could make her family's clothes and had a garden, and I tried it all, and before I finally got around to just being me and finding out who I was in Christ. And, you know, a lot of people still, it amazes me really how many people still don't understand Mm -hmm. what that means. Well, let's start there, because... We've all talked about it on this podcast. You talk about it all the time, how this is very likely the most important thing right. you can grasp because you can't even understand salvation, who who Christ is and yeah. what he's done for you without this knowledge. So what does it mean in Christ when you say that? Well, let me just first say that a large majority of churches don't even teach this. So hmm. I was in church for a lot of years before I knew who I was in Christ. And it's actually a phrase that's all over the Bible, especially in in Paul's letters. Mm. And I have a thing on the internet for anybody who wants to look it up called Knowing Who I Am in Christ. And I don't, I think there's like 40 different things on here that the Bible actually says that we are in Christ. I won't read them all, but just for example, I am complete in Him. Mm -hmm. So let's just take an example like say, um, a single girl um, is invited to something where she knows everybody's going to be married couples. Okay. Hmm. Well, if she doesn't know who she is in Christ, then she can feel like she's really out of place. She right. doesn't belong there. She shouldn't be there. Something's wrong with me because I'm not married. But if she knows that she's complete in Christ, yeah. then she doesn't have to have a man to complete her. <laughs> She's yeah. complete in who she mm-hmm. is in him. Mm-hmm. And it's the same way, really, with, with anything, like even like what you were talking about, Aaron, about feeling unqualified yeah. to be here. Mm-hmm. You're qualified in him mm-hmm. because you made yourself available. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm alive with Christ. I'm free from the law of sin and death. I'm far from oppression, and I will not live in fear. I'm born of God, and the evil one does not touch me. And it's just, I mean, every one of these are just, absolutely beautiful and if you can really learn who you are in christ and it really we're in christ by faith when you receive christ as your savior then you're considered to be in christ and so if you're in something whatever that something gets you get Mm -hmm. so we were considered to be in christ when he died on the cross so when he died we died When he was raised from the dead, we were raised from the dead. He took our sin. Yeah, he took our sin. When he ascended on high and was seated at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says in Ephesians that we too are seated at the right hand of Mm -hmm. God. So literally, believers live in two places. We live here with our feet on the earth, but we're also living in heavenly places with Christ. And when you can really grasp how much he loves you and what he's done for you, and that he says he never will leave you nor forsake you. His thoughts toward you are more than the sands of the sea. You're made acceptable in him. 
And if you meditate on those things instead of what's wrong with you all the time, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, you know, then after a while, you get it. But it's amazing how many people that I talk to about knowing who you are in Christ, because that's the only thing that's going to keep you from being insecure. That's Either that so or you're going to try to get it through your career, mm -hmm, how much right. money you have, how you look, what you wear, who you know, mm -hmm. and I'm done with all that. Yeah. You know, I went through all that, and that's that's all just a bunch of fluff and air. You talk about something that's an imposter. Yeah, exactly. That is, because it says, come here, and I'll make you mm -hmm. complete. I'll, I'll make you secure. Mm. And then it fails you just when you need it the most. <laughs> it's really interesting, because when, when you Google knowing who you are in Christ online, your list pops up, and very few other things come up. Mm -hmm. You'll get a couple blogs from other people. Right. And I think that speaks to what you're saying. That's not a part of our culture. It's not. And people don't know to be taught or to learn who they are in Christ. I'll, I have a career, and I'm going to chase that, and I will figure it out there, or I'll be validated in this relationship. Mm -hmm. But we aren't taught often enough. And it's actually one of the most important foundational yeah. doctrines mm -hmm. that Paul taught, who we are in Christ. Like, and it, it, it takes hearing it over and over mm -hmm. and over, really, for Absolutely. it to sink in. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to listen to another way that Joyce explains it um, and one of her teachings, and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about it. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for our sake he made Christ virtually, that means really, <laughs> to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through him, we might become endued with, viewed as, being in and examples of the righteousness of God. What we ought to be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with him by his goodness. Now, to be honest, you could take that one verse and study it for the next two weeks. And maybe if that's all you looked at for two weeks and thought about it and meditated on it, it might begin to start to sink on, sink in. Jesus took your sin because he's good, not because you're good. <laughs> he took the penalty. He took the punishment. And he gave you, <laughs> gave you his righteousness that he earned by never doing anything wrong, and it, we can't figure it out mathematically in our head, but the Bible says that if we believe that, <laughs> then God views us or he sees us as his very own righteousness because he sees us through Christ. He sees us, he doesn't see us in our old sinful state, he sees us as these new creatures that we are where inside, in our spirit. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. So you have all this amazingly wonderful, good stuff on the inside of you. Now you still have a flesh too that has the sin principle in it. This is why after you become a really committed Christian, you sometimes feel that you're in a war all the time. Do you ever feel like you're two people? <laughs> the thing I want to do, I can't do. The thing I don't want to do, I'm always doing. I mean, I can make such plans for holiness laying in bed. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say anything wrong that day. I'm going to be so submissive and such a good wife, and I'm not going to talk back, and I'm going to be kind. I'm not going to gossip about anybody. I mean, I'm just, I'm so good until I put my feet on the floor. <laughs> Can't we all relate to that? <laughs> yes. huh? We make these wonderful plans for our own righteousness, yeah. and boy, I'm then so like you said. I'm so perfect before I get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> full of joy. So full yeah. of joy. So full listen, of Listen plans. to this one scripture. This just leaves your mouth hanging open and all. I am holy and without blame mm -hmm. before him in love. Okay, now let, let me ask you what is going through people's minds. I know better than that. I have messed up so many times. I'm not without blame. So how does that work for me well, see, in my imperfection? They're missing the two words. I am holy and without blame before him hmm. in love. And that's what you have to look for. Every one of these, mm -hmm. I am complete in him. This has nothing to do with, right, with yeah. me. 
it's, I call it the divine exchange. He takes all of our badness and gives us all of his goodness. You know, he takes all of our sin, everything, and he gives us all of his goodness. Yeah. I, I liken it to when I married Dave, I always say, I didn't have a car, but he had a car. And as soon as he and I were married, suddenly I had a car. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, but I make a point that I didn't have that while we were dating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was after I said I do. So some people are still just dating Jesus, mm. and they so need good. to get around to the, yes, Lord. A full-on commitment. A full-on mm-hmm. commitment and uh, begin to walk in what's theirs. We're co-inheritors with him. Everything that he inherited from God, the Bible says that we're joint heirs with him, we get to. And so you either believe that or you believe how you feel. Mm-hmm. And I believe so those how are the I two f- options. I believed how I felt and what I thought and what other people said about me for years and years, and all I was was miserable. And when I finally decided to believe the Word of God over how I felt and what I thought, then I started having some joy and some peace and beginning to enjoy my life. I really, I love that. I love the, the analogy of the car Mm -hmm. yeah that just makes it so so real you know and I'm just walking into something these this past couple years like where I'm really like grasping how wrong I had it you know (laughs) I thought I knew God and he you know I knew who I was you know but looking back and just reflecting when you asked earlier you know if I've ever dealt with that I just I've really taken these past couple years to really do some life reflection you know to be like what is up like what like what are the good things, bad things? You know, what mm-hmm. can I work on right now? And just looking back, I realized how much of an imposter I've been the majority of my life. Like, I was, I'm was i a pastor's kid, um, even though my relationship with my dad wasn't perfect, but I'm a pastor's kid. And I thought that that, that was my identity at first. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I went, I was, I was, you know, Pastor Vaughn's daughter. Like, that was my thing, you know? I was a worship leader. Then, um, but then going to a school where I was the only, one of the only black girls, like, in my school. And I look back at pictures of me, even in high school, where I had blonde hair, mm-hmm. I got blue contacts. I didn't realize. I didn't even realize. I look crazy. Like, <laughs> but I, I didn't even realize. I was. I, I wanted to fit in so badly uh, yeah. that I even. I have long. I, I, I still love braids. Don't get it wrong. I got a couple blonde streaks in there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying. Like I had a full head of blonde braids and blue contacts wanting to fit in so badly yeah. until the fact that even when I got I, when I got married, I became his wife, you yeah. know. And so now in this season of my life, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. I'm like, God, who am I for real? And I realized <laughs> wow. all that time, like I was I was dating God, but I was married to the other s- situations. Right. I was married mm. to my identity was in my father or who I looked like in school or what I did or the job I got, the degrees I got, the marriage. But now it's really, it was a reality check. And so when you brought that up, it just really struck something with Mm -hmm. me. Like I am so at a place now where I just want to be like one with him that, that the, that the car is now mine too. You know, like my identity is found in him, not in who I'm with or what I'm doing. How are you making that shift? Um, talking like this, being, mm-hmm. and, and actually <laughs> having those reality check moments to yeah. look back, taking that time to reflect, be like, girl, girl, you didn't, you, you're not this high and mighty, you know, like yeah. that's nothing. And nobody cares what you did. Nobody cares what you do. Like mm-hmm. it's about who you are with him and really just having those honest conversations with God and being honest with him and repenting and saying, God, you know what? I had it all wrong (laughs) and teach me, Mm -hmm. just teach me what, what this looks like. And I'm I'm almost feeling like, and it's hard at almost 40 now, like that I'm, I feel like I'm starting over in an extent and to an extent. And it's not a bad thing. Um, And I'm encouraged by, by Joyce, like the fact that you talk about this stuff. And I know that like, how old were you when you married Dave? And like, you realized. Oh, 26. Oh, okay. So, but I'm saying, but like the, and when I hear, like how even I didn't you, realize that when I first married Dave, I gave him a lot of trouble for a long time because I didn't know who I was in Christ. Yeah. If you don't know, if you don't have your identity straight and know who you are, you normally put that off on other people. Mm, that's so and true. And you want them to make you feel. You good. want them to make you whole. And, yeah. you know, I remember it was was a few years, but God told me He said, "Stop giving Dave the responsibility for your joy." 
I remember, I've heard you say that a couple of times, and I've always felt really annoyed by it because I'm like, that's <laughs> what I'm doing, Aaron. I, I am putting my feelings of myself on somebody else. Right. I have to take that back to God. You're not annoying. What you told me was hard because it's <laughs> where I was. Yeah. It's so good. It's not easy. And you know, something that's important for people to know, no matter how old you are, the devil loves nothing better than to try to make you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just went through a period of, I don't know what it was, maybe a couple of weeks where I got focused on, um, you're not praying enough, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you're not doing something else. And so clearly this morning when I first got up, I heard the Lord speak in my heart and say, I don't want you to think about anything this morning unless it's something good about yourself. Mm -hmm. And see, God actually wants us to have good thoughts about ourself in Him. Yeah, right. I'm creative in Him. I'm talented in Him. I'm forgiven in Him. I can do all things through Him. I'm complete in Him. And uh, if people feel like that's wrong. Yeah. You know, we somehow or another we feel like it's holy to mm-hmm. think that you're a rotten, no good, you know, that that's what God wants. But He doesn't want that. Right. Yeah. It, he really can't do anything with us until we know who we are in Him. That's so beautiful. It it's beautiful to like own that. And I'm walking in that now. Mm-hmm. That when you ask like what what are some of the things that you're doing? Yeah. I'm doing that. I'm actually allowing myself to speak nice things about myself and not be defined by the things I've been through in my past that mm-hmm. that did identify that did define who I was for a season. Like right. it was it was my story. And yeah. I felt like you can't I didn't know myself past my story. You you're know? doing something really powerful, and, and what you're always teaching us is taking the power away from that imposter mm-hmm. through our own honesty and vulnerability, mm-hmm. because that that imposter is what's out there trying to make everybody think everything's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, 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 I've got it all together. Everything is looking good over here. But when we can just be vulnerable and say, hey, I'm just guessing at this. Yeah. I'm walking with God and He's teaching me so many right. things, but I'm so far from perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It takes the power away from that whole feeling of being imposter, an imposter, and it, it helps keep you in Christ mm-hmm. because I think this this walk with Christ is definitely a bit of a in and out slippery slope sometimes. We're never in and out of our relationship with Christ because what he did counts for everything. But I take steps forward and backwards mm-hmm. sometimes. Well, sure, your mind, the devil attacks your mind, the battlefield of the mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He attacks your mind and, and he does it to everybody. Yeah. And just about the time you think you've got it nailed down mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, then He'll attack you, and you have to go back to the beginning. But I, it just came to me so strongly this morning what Paul said. One thing I do, it is my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind Ugh. and pressing on to the things that are ahead. So every single day his mercy is new, and he doesn't want us thinking about yesterday's mistakes. We're sorry for him. We wish we wouldn't have done it. But we'll probably do it again. And need forgiveness again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think before you can ever know who you are in Christ, I think you have to know who you're not in yourself. Mm. Mm. Wow. So you, you kind of have to, I like to say, come to the end of yourself. So it seems like God just has to stand back and let you try and fail, 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 until you finally realize, I can't do this. Yeah. I, can't, I can't live the Christian life. Mm-hmm. God's got to live it through me. I can't, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't keep up this imposter image anymore. It's right. completely worn me out. I can't pretend for people anymore that I'm not. Yeah. You know. I, I had who a. I am. I had a, a time like that because talking about the the way that I was raised, and I I did have that benefit um, of always being told who I was in Christ and and kind of being raised in that. But sometimes there are things that happen in our lives that are setbacks and that not because God did anything different, but that 
twist our thoughts in a way that he never wanted mm-hmm. us to be twisted. And so at this time, you know, I was, it was before I worked here, quite a while before I worked here, and I was doing a daily talk show, hosting, um, you know, sharing all these great things that God is doing in people's lives and sharing the gospel. And then I found out, and I've shared this before, but then I found out that my husband had an, an addiction to pornography. And at that point, I felt like all of these images of who I was were just tossed aside because I could be this person at work, but when I went home, I knew I wasn't enough. When I went home, I wasn't good enough or pretty enough or what he needed because he was looking somewhere else. So I'm still doing all these things like we all do as Christians at church or wherever we go. You know, for, for me, it was, it was on television in front of a lot of people. But I remember having that, this feeling of if they only knew, mm-hmm. if they could only see the, the anger inside of me, the mm-hmm. hurt inside of me, they would know what an imposter I am mm. because of all these feelings that I'm not sharing openly with everyone. And it was so wonderful of God after, after a lot of dealing with that. He gave me just this peace that I was dealing with those things with Him, and mm. it didn't all have to be in the open. But as long as I was continually walking through it with Him, that He would bring out that vulnerability, that He would bring out who I really was in Him, that it's that relationship between me and Him right. that yeah. is that more, more than even what everybody else sees. But when you do that, then it, it does spill out into mm-hmm. what everybody else is seeing around you. And you're, you're nothing but you and God, because yeah. I, I had to learn that. My value wasn't in how my husband saw me. Yeah. Or what I saw missing in myself, my value was in how God saw me, and I, I had to learn that lesson again, and, and right. just kind of go back to the beginning. Sometimes we have to learn them again, and again. Yeah. Like I said, you know, I, my mind was attacked for a couple of weeks of you're not, you're not, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, and I know better than that. Yeah, you know, and I had to just hear it from God again. You know, and that's okay. Yeah. One thing when you're when you're sharing about the car that that analogy that I thought of was how when you say I do you're continually getting to know either your spouse but then also your relationship with Christ and so I walked with God for a long time but I'm still like every day some seems to be new mm-hmm. and you'll go through seasons like when I had children I looked different mm-hmm. I responded to things differently my like I didn't change but. But parts of me had to change because I now have two humans I'm taking care of, and it just affects your everything. So I was, it's like I had to reintroduce myself to God and myself in that season. And I've had that happen a couple of different occasions where it's like God's taking me to the next step, like the next level in, in how I know and relate to Him. Mm-hmm. So I get to know Him more, which helps me know me more in Him. That mm-hmm. makes sense, but it does feel like it's it something does. you're ever growing. Because the, closest, the, the closer we get to Him, the more we understand what He has given us, what He has done for us, what He has put in us, the more we do get to know mm-hmm. ourselves. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. the God of all creation created us in His image. Yeah. So we learn so much about ourselves the more we learn about Him. <laughs> I think people think that God wants their works, mm-hmm. and what He wants is that relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we are to do good works, but it's it's out of the overflow of who we are in Him, not to earn anything from Him or to gain anything from Him or to be proud of ourselves or, you know, to have this good record, but just because of what He's done for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that you know what and that is something that I really did struggle with was mm-hmm. that works based. And we've talked about it so many times on the show, but um I just thought because I did this or didn't do this, because I was a virgin before I got married, because I didn't do that, you know, that my marriage was protected, that my mm-hmm. everything was protected because, because, because I did this, I did that and did that, you know, yeah. and I, so I, 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 yeah, because like I did all these goats, got all these gold stars. So then why would my life ever be uh, touched? You know, so <laughs> we're good here, God. We're good here, right? I did all the right stuff, but it's a hard reality check when it's like, boom, no, you're not exempt, you know, yeah. from, from life happening. But can I be really, really honest with you all? Like I'm a little, I'm a little down today because and and this is something I was going to ask you about. You're hiding it good. Thank she you. Is. <laughs> because I've been I've been a professional imposter for almost yeah. forty years, yeah. <laughs> and um, 
So last night, um, and this is, I, I want to ask you about how to like let go of the past and not allow it to identify who you are, you know, last night and I posted about it and everything. Um, my daughter was headed back to go see her dad and I didn't want her to go at night. I didn't want her to have a flight at night, but her dad wanted that. He wanted to get a flight you know, at night because he just was ready to get her back or whatever. <laughs> I hate co-parenting, but I'm just being transparent. But, um, but as she was going back, then my kid, um, sh she wasn't feeling that well. And so she's already not the most like alert kid. That's like, you know, she just, she's been coddled. Like I've been, a, I've been a good mom, I guess. <laughs> but so, so she's not that aware in the airports. And so, and she actually was like, well, mom, maybe I was thinking about being with you because she literally at our connecting flight, because there are no direct direct flights at her connecting flight. She um, was sitting at a, um, a stop where she was headed back to St. Louis. She didn't pay attention. She so she was supposed to be headed to where her dad is, but she was sitting. So she missed her flight. Mm -hmm. And she's never missed her flight. She's only 17. And grant you, that's a pretty mature age. But for her, like at nighttime, no more flights at night. I was really, oh, yeah. really upset. And I was just like, I felt so helpless. I felt like a bad mom because I'm like, how am I even in this position where my kid has to go back and forth, you know, to see her parents? Um, and so I felt like a bad mom, even though it, it wasn't my fault, you know, and then she called and she was scared. But of course, I'm like, I got to make this work. I got to make this work. And so I was calling friends to find out, like, because I have friends everywhere. Thank God. <laughs> you know, so one of my friends ended up getting there before I was so angry with my ex-husband. I mean, I was angry, like, like, how could you have put us in this position? You know, that she was not feeling well and she's stuck. And I was just like, I lost it, guys. Mm -hmm. I lost it on the phone to him. I let, I, and it, and I like things that I even thought that I was healed from. I clearly was not, you know, and to grant you, I know it takes time, but I was y'all. He heard my mind that last night and I felt bad and I was I, I repented to him. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm just upset. And when my baby's involved, then it just makes me upset. But I lost it and it was it was ugly. I was ugly. I was just ugly. <laughs> and I'm like, and I, repent. I was like, God, please forgive me. Help me. And thankfully, um, your um, one of your executive assistants who got me, her name's Penny. She got me this little bracelet that says 26.2 now that I wear it it's a, a mar it's a marathon not a not a sprint and so mm -hmm. I wear it every day ever since she got it to me and I looked at it last night I'm like I'm I'm still moving forward like even though I have moments that I backtrack but how do I let that go because I woke up this morning I felt pretty good like okay thank you brand new mercy brand new grace we say that all the time right and I was like before I got out of the bed I felt perfect then I got out the bed you know? <laughs> <laughs> then I was just like oh how could I have let myself go back there you know so well, you know how the bible says that God works all things out for good yeah and I think a lot of times when those things happen that doesn't mean that you know what your husband did was right or the way it turned out was right but God will take a situation like that and he'll pull the weaknesses in you out yeah so you can see them so you, you can't deal with something that you don't know is there or that you're hiding from. And as far as the letting go, it's a, just, it's a decision that we have to make. And the, the whole feeling guilty thing, when like, okay, you, you misbehaved, you feel guilty. Well, that's our way of trying to pay for our sin. Guilt is our way of trying to pay for our sin. God had to show me that. And he said, I've already paid. I don't need you to pay. What I need you is to be confident and able to do what I've called you to do. And so it's a by faith thing. You know, you let go of it because he said to let go of it. And, you know, I don't mean to make it sound like it's just a breeze because it's not. But what happens is every time you go through something like that, you learn a little bit more how to oh, let yeah. go. Hmm. And I can't promise you you won't go through something again yeah. that will teach you how to let go. I mean, I suffered with guilt for so many years, and I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am to be free from that now. But it did not happen overnight because I grew up feeling guilty because my dad was abusing me, feeling like it was my fault. And so guilt was, I mean, I actually, I didn't feel right if I didn't feel wrong. I mean, you know, if I felt right about myself, I well, something's wrong with that. Yeah. And uh, But p if people won't give up, they will get there. Hmm. That's why Paul said one thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
He said it was the most important thing to him. So think about that. The Apostle Paul said, that's the most important thing to me. Yeah. Is to let go of yesterday's mistakes and press on to what's ahead. I think we have such a strong desire, a drive to be perfect. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And that formulates our self-worth, our self-value. And, and that's what we're talking about here is that's what we're fighting against naturally. I know I hate it when I do these things that you're talking about too. And, and I, you know, will act out or make a wrong choice or say the wrong thing, whatever it may be, and beat myself up over it. And coming back to that point where God is not asking us to be perfect. I'm going to bring this up because I, I, I talk about this all the time, but Psalm 139 is one of those things Mm -hmm. that God just brought to me so strongly in that time that I was talking about where I felt like I was just messing up all the time and I wasn't enough no matter what I did. And just the way it begins, it says, Lord, you have searched me. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways before a word is on my tongue. Lord, you knew it. He Mm -hmm. knew what you were going to do and what you Mm -hmm. were going to say. And yet then it goes on to say, you love me so much. That verse that Joyce was talking about, your thoughts toward me are more than the grains of sand on the beach. So even when I know that I am so far from perfection that I just blew it in a big way, God comes back and says, I know everything about you, and I still adore you, and I'm going to help you, I'm going to teach you, and I'm not going to leave you in that place. We're never going to reach perfection, but we're going to get better, and I've gotten so much better, and I've seen so much growth. Uh, really in, in all of us. I, so you were surprised by your behavior, but God wasn't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ooh, clutch my pearls. <laughs> She's still, she still got work to do. <laughs> oh. it's, so, it's so funny you say that. I'm, I had a very similar experience last night for something that I, too, thought I was way past. And I was actually like this week thinking, wow, Aaron, we are doing so good here. We, we, Aaron yeah. is doing so right. good here. Aaron, myself, and I. Yeah, me, myself, and I. And last night I lost it and I blew up and I hear, I'm hearing. <laughs> last night was a night. You guys were a mess last night. <laughs> it's so yes. good you're here today. And I'm hearing words come out of my mouth and I'm thinking, Aaron, you just like stop speaking. And I couldn't. And I thought, <laughs> well, just shut just, up. We'll just go with it at this point. But it was, it was awful. And I, I had the same thought you did. And I thought, this is not where I have come so far to go back to that spot. That's not mm-hmm. where I want to go. So. I love you, friend. I love you, too. Okay. <laughs> you got, well, we got a We're lot, just of, a mess got a lot here. of letting go to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but what that does, and honestly, it seems like the more transparent I become about talking about where I am and. It currently, like mm-hmm. right now, the the more like the enemy tries to like prick at things oh, yeah. to like allow that to come back up and fester back up. And so he knew what we were studying about. He knew. And I'm like, I am not that person mm-hmm. anymore. You know, I was, I was declaring Same. it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't lose my temper like that anymore. You know, I'm <laughs> over him. Sign on, sucker. You know, like, <laughs> like <but laughs> And I was in it is like, oh, your baby. When it's something with my kid, it's something that happens. I don't know. And I'm like, Rrr. I turned into a hole. Mama bear yeah, comes I was out. Like, yeah. like, I'm like, how could you? And then it was certain things that came out in that conversation that had nothing to do with my baby being at the airport. It's like, hey, yep. you did this and you cheated on me. And I was like, oh, God, <laughs> where, what is wrong? And I'm like, I she, she just, and then in my mind, I could just hear Satan saying like, yeah, you're still that person. Mm-hmm. You're still that person. I'm like, I don't want, that is not my identity. That's not who I am. So I did immediately. And so that's how I know growth is happening. I immediately denounced it. I still felt really bad, but I denounced it. I'm like, no, that's not who I am. I even humbled myself. I apologize, uh, you know, and I, I repented to him and to the Lord. And so I was like, that is, no, that is growth. So I, I, you know, gave myself a little encouragement, said, you're not as bad as you used to be. Well, everybody yeah. watching us today ought to feel pretty good about themselves. <laughs> you know, it, it does do something to know you're not alone in all these things that you're feeling or doing, whether it's today or tomorrow or 10 years ago, you know, whatever it may have been. That vulnerability 
takes away so much of that. We can quit being an imposter and learn and walk in who we are Mm -hmm. in Christ, what He's done for us. Because I don't have to stay at that point where I felt like I wasn't enough. And the most important thing is to never give up. Yeah. Yeah. I want everybody watching to remember that. Do not give up. It may be a slow go, Mm -hmm. but you'll get there. And don't let the devil tell you that you're any different than anybody else because you're not. Yeah. That's Thank you good. all That's so really much. Good. You know, it's a good talk. It's hard stuff to throw out there. Really hard. But <laughs> it's... my notes were about all about how prepared I am for this and how well I'm doing in this area. And I just sat here and <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But I do, I do want to like say this before we leave is like, because I grew up in church and I grew up surrounded by leaders and this is no shame towards it but these types of talks are so or like are not common and we talked about this at the beginning they're not common in the christian world in the church world i was surrounded by people that i thought were perfect and it mm-hmm. shattered my heart to find out that they weren't well that's what's got to be turned around exactly yeah. i've re- written a book that'll come out this fall on being authentic and especially in the church mm-hmm. we feel like that I get so tired of, how are you? Fine, I'm fine. Praise the Lord, I'm fine. It's like, no, you ain't. You ain't fine. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Not at all. And there's two problems. We're afraid we'll be judged, but we're also afraid people will tell our secrets. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so there's a lot that people have to learn about being discreet and keeping people's secrets and not judging them. Yeah. But it's a shame that we have to pretend with each other and that we can't have honest conversations like these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one reason why I share so candidly here. First of all, I trust you guys. I forget that we have all of our other friends watching <laughs> sometimes, but I really don't want to, I don't want to be, my daughter deserves better than that. The people that look up to me, that I lead in church, like I, they deserve better than that. And, and I, I thank you for leading mm-hmm. that charge, Joyce. Like you lead the charge of transparency. And mm-hmm. so like, I'm just not out here just, just doing it because you know, it's just something that I enjoy doing. No, I'm really trying to break a habit of something that I even saw growing up, it, like that that facade of perfectionism and break that off of myself. I don't want that. I want to be honest. And if we're going to be honest, let's just be honest. And that's what I appreciate about yeah. about you guys. You guys are helping me figure out who I am too and, and know who my identity is in Christ. So thank you, ladies. Well, we all have those different parts of our life, right? We have our family life, we have our professional life, we have our, our church life and and our our life with people who are really close to us. And sometimes we compartmentalize and mm-hmm. think, I'm okay here, I've got mm-hmm. some issues here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hide these and keep these to myself. Mm-hmm. And when we give God access to all those things, it hurts along mm-hmm. the way sometimes. But that is when he really does come in and say, I know you're not perfect. And I'm still working on you, and I still love you. So we've got a resource for you. It's absolutely free, and it's just really helpful. If you want to study more about this, and let me let me just say this, talking it out is good. We've got to talk it out. But you have to dig into what God's Word <laughs> right. says yeah. about you, or you'll never really understand who you are in Christ. So this teaching is called Knowing Who You Are in Christ. It is a free booklet that you can download. So go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. You can get that. You can also sign up for our friends email list. So it's a great reminder of when the podcasts are coming up, some fun surprises behind the scenes stuff. You can also catch up on all of our podcasts. So we hope that you'll subscribe, tell your friends about us, and come back here and let's talk it out again next time. Good stuff, you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for being with us. We'll see you later. Go get today's free resource at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And while you're at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can also review previous episodes, get to know us a little better, and sign up for our friends list to receive exclusive content. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast.